Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. We are continuing our series on rebuilding this magnetic sign chuck. The trick now is getting this magnet off of the top plate. And let's say it's not easy. So what I'm going to actually do is do a lever action. I've got a piece of plywood down here. We're going to screw a couple others down to it and then set up a cam so we can just inch it over. Similar to sliding it back and forth with the system that's already in place, but we just have to move it a lot longer distance. I think what's happened is there's a little ridge that is worn as the magnet moves back and forth over the years. I'm going to try a little something different. Well, I got to say, it's pretty ugly under there. There's a lot of rust. The risk in, of course, hitting anything with a hammer is it'll break, especially one of these ceramic magnet setups. They can be very fragile. So I just want to warn you that I wish this cam system would have worked. Probably would have if I would have taken more time. So I would suggest trying to get back to this. We've got it apart. Let's clean this up and see what happens to it. This is just paint thinner. One of my favorite ways of getting rid of grease. One of the things you want to mark also is which side your magnet was laying on this because if it doesn't line up correctly when you put it back together again, you'll have some problems. Usually there is only one way you can do it, but just in case I have a little mark here that was actually ground out already, that marks which side this pin goes on to. So I have available to me two ways to clean this up. This is definitely pitted rust. So anytime there's pitting here and here, that means the magnetic flux is probably not transferring as well. You remember how I talked about one corner being pretty weak? That probably, it might have been this corner. Um, also, the chuck is only four and a half inches wide here. And this line here is like probably four and three quarters. So this whole section right here technically doesn't even have the magnet connected to it. So this side of the chuck is going to be weak. And that's also the side that the handle is on. My two choices to clean this up is, actually I've got three choices. I can go put it on the surface grinder, grind this down. Um, that's my last choice. Next one is I can lap this. I can put a piece of sandpaper on top of my, sur my granite, granite surface plate and lap it that way. And that's actually a great way of doing it. But I'm going to lap it in a third way that's actually a more accurate way of lapping and a way I've never shown. And I think you guys will like it. So I'm going to take you outside and show you a completely different type of lapping process using Japanese water stones. We're outside the shop right now and I want to show you how to re-flatten a piece of steel like this. It's critical that this is flat because it, the magnet and the top plate have to rub together so if there's any inconsistencies you're not going to get as strong a magnetic attraction. And I'm going to do it a different way. Like I said, I could put this on the surface grinder, grind it down, I could also do lapping with like a piece of sandpaper. If I had a lapping plate, which I don't, I'd actually probably lap it. But those are all, let's see, a lapping plate is a very slow process. Surface grinder is great, but it's a large surface. It's going to take some time. Doing it with sandpaper on top of a surface plate also would be actually my next choice. 
But I want to show you a different technique working with what are called Japanese water stones. And they're for sharpening. Or just like you would have like an Indian stone or an Arkansas stone, these are actually called Japanese water stones. It's because you actually use water as a lubricant instead of oil. What makes these very significant is they're a synthetic material and they're consistently hard throughout the entire stone and you can get them in different grits. So compared to an Indian stone which is very hard, you can't flatten them as easy. These, you literally just, they self flatten, you rub them up against each other and they will become perfectly flat. I've never measured how flat one of these are after doing that. I'm going to bet I can be within, from corner to corner, probably a hundred thousandths of an inch, or you would say ten millionths of an inch accuracy in this. And someday, actually, I'm going to have to do a test and show you that that is actually possible. But basically what you want to do is you flatten it, you're going to keep two stones together, flatten it often, and you'll know when it's not flat because it kind of moves and jerks around. And also you can look at it and see what the finish is like. But I'm going to simply just come across here. And just keep working it. The stone I'm working with right here, this is the Norton 220 grit stone. So it's incredibly coarse. So I'm just going to keep working this. and I'll bring you back in a little bit. So one of the tricks to doing this is you never want your stone to be more than a third of the length of your stone over the surface that you're trying to surface. So as long as you do that, you will keep it accurate. Also you will feel if the high spot starts to develop because as you're pushing it grabs. And a low spot of course will be uh, too easy to move it across. So as long as you're doing this and you're feeling, what do I want to say, consistent forces against your stone, you're keeping it flat. You can see how this is not quite level yet and that's also where all the bad rust and pitting was on the uh, top plate. I think I'm going to actually take this to the surface grinder. The challenge with doing that is the ceramic magnets are incredibly hard because they're basically glass. So I can only skim this, then I'm going to come back and re-flatten with the stones. The magnet and the top surface or table, I'm not sure what to call that, actually worked out really well. Um, eventually, you know, what I ended up doing is I tried to surface them with wet stones. For some reason, and it's only happened this one time, it just wasn't working as well as I'd like to. So I went over to the surface grinder, ground them, and then took them back and stoned them down a little bit. And they turned out really well. I had to take off a lot more material than I really wanted to because of the rust. And that is why we're doing this repair is the rust. Next we have to take and make these two parts. And as you can see the challenge with these parts is they're rusted and worn so to get accurate measure, measurements is going to be difficult. Now if you remember what happens is this comes in here, rotates, and moves the magnet. Well, the challenge here is getting 
it to move the magnets correctly so they line up. And if they don't line up, we're not going to get full magnetism. And that's going to be a challenge because particularly on this part, these holes are worn out so much where these two here, so you can see how much room there is. So to try to find the center of this may not be that easy. I think what I'm going to have to do is just take a really good guess and hope it's good enough. And if it's not, just plan on making another part. I hope you guys have enjoyed this last video. There's still a lot more to come. We've got some very cool milling work to do on this, some unique lathe techniques, measuring techniques. As you can see in that first video, there's a lot of stuff that has to be done to this magnetic sign chuck to get it back into shape. So I want you guys to stay tuned. If you like this video, please give me some thumbs up. Also leave some of your comments. And until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks.